Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, SkySiv walkthrough. Today we're going to cover how to design connections uh, using SkySiv Structural 3D and the Integrated Connection Design Module. Um, so as you can see the software is all cloud-based, so I'm just uh, visiting it through a web browser. And today we're going to start by building the model, then we're going to look at um, analyzing the model, reviewing the results and checking where our um, you know, peak stresses, peak, sorry, peak uh, forces are so we can select a connection to design and then proceeding with the design process um, for our connections. So today I'm going to start with the modeling stage. Now if you've watched any of our videos before and you know how to do this part, you can skip ahead um, to the next chapter which covers um, reviewing the results. But for today I thought I'd build a really quick model, it only takes a few minutes, um, you might pick up some shortcuts along the way as well. And um, yeah, we're going to start go through that whole process from start to finish of how we can um, analyze a model and then design the connections of that of that structure. So I'm going to just use the pen tool, so it's one of my favorite features, it's just really easy to sort of build my model. Um, I can plug in a number, so say I'll say 12 feet, hit enter, and um, just sort of frame up my structure just using um, XYZ kind of planes. I usually have my finger over the escape key just so I can exit out if I need to of the um, the pen tool so for instance I just hit escape then so I can use uh, node 5 as my reference node and it'll pick up adjacent nodes which is really handy. Okay. So something simple like that. And what we'll do is um, we will assign different members to these as well. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm just going to highlight, hold control, highlight. And then for those members there, let's go section two. Let's introduce a different section, which will represent our beams. And the, the uh, black section ones will be the columns. So um, yeah, a, a really, really easy feature as well is just the copy and paste. I'm just going to control A and copy. I'll see that's selected node 1 as my reference node. So I'll paste that to node 2. So you can see it's building something up like that. Paste it again. And yeah, maybe we'll copy this and again using that. Actually, before we do that, let's let's actually assign some loads so that when we copy it, it'll... Actually, you know what? I'll change my mind again. Let's, <laughs> let's do it all at once at the end. Uh, that way I can show you how the area load functionality works. Um, so again, I'm just copying and pasting the substructure to kind of build my frame real quickly and easily. Um, let's add some supports to the base. I'm just going to control right to left and that will just select all those nodes. And then I'll go to supports, double click here and apply those. So I'm really making the, the most of the use of um, the hold and control and then selecting. So now I'm going to go the opposite way and just highlight all the members that come in contact with that box. And we're going to change those member fixities because we're going to design some shear connections and they typically have um, sort of pinned end releases. So you can see the, the dot there um, denoting that these fixities are now uh, released. Okay, so now we're going to apply some area loads. Uh, so we'll do just some simple ones. We'll do a area load at the top. So I'm just going to plug in the nodes. Uh, maybe a 0 0.25 in the global Y. We'll make this a live load. I can call this whatever load group I like. And I think that's gone the wrong direction, so I'll select that. And the column to beam direction, I'm just going to do 40, node 40 to 39. So it gets applied in that way, in that direction. And you can see now it's calculated all my tributary areas there, so I don't have to do any manual processing there. Um, it's automatically calculated the tributary area between the columns, uh, between the beams, and calculated the distributed loads there. So we'll do a live load there, we'll do a dead load here. Actually, we'll do the same thing. We'll do, we can do a two-way just to show that feature off. Uh, 38, 9, 11, 36. 0 0.4 or 0.5, call this dead load. And with the two way area load, you'll see that it's done the outside. I've got a little setting here uh, with the modeling 
detect inner members when applying two-way loads. So now I can see that's calculated the tributary area as a two-way load, which is obviously a lot more, you know, cumbersome when you're doing it by hand. So automatically um, able to to apply the um, tributary areas and the correct forces. And then finally, we'll do one last one just to this face as to sort of demonstrate an area load. Uh, sorry, a wind load. So I'll do area loads again. Let's go column wind loads. So we'll do 26 to 39 to 14 to 4. So that's the face. And we're going to do the global x direction. See that in my model. And the elevation. So we're going to go from 0 to 10 feet. Let's have a look at the height of the building, which is 36 feet, 36. Because what this lets you do is apply different pressures um, along that span. Uh, obviously with area with wind loads, as we go up the building, it increases. So um, being able to put in a sort of an array of pressures means that we can put in something like 0 0.25 KSF and then 0 0.5 KSF from that 10 foot to 36 foot range. Um, and we'll call this wind load. <clears throat> so let's, let's turn that back on. You can see I've done the wrong direction, so I'm just going to select that and put a negative between these to apply that in the correct direction. <clears throat> and you can see that's now increased. So from 0 to 10, we've got that 0 0.25, and then from 10 to 36 feet, we've got that um, 0 0.5 KSF. Okay, so we've got some loads, we've got some supports. Now we're going to add the sections, and these are really important, obviously, when we're designing the connection, because um, that's going to directly influence our connection design. So let's go ahead and assign these sections. So the column, um, you can go through either the builder, or there's this shorthand library selection from here, so I'll do that. The search function's really helpful for this. I can quickly and easily find the section I'm looking for. Load that in. And do the same for our beam. So we're going to do a W10 by 12. Submit that. Finally, we'll just add some load combinations. Um, it's not a necessary step, but for this example, we're going to review the results that come out of the analysis and select which connection to design. So um, pretty important for that if we're going to do a, an actual design. So I'll do live loads, assign these win loads. And we get import from AS, ASCE, um, so w we can just use those predefined um, design code load combinations. So our model, model is uh, ready to solve, so we're going to continue now with solving the structure. So I'm just going to hit solve, just do a linear static analysis, and um, yeah, solve all the different load combinations. So on the left here we can see all those load combinations, we can see the load cases, individual load cases. So I can review all these individual cases, or I can look at the envelope cases. So this is a faster way where we've sort of interpreted all the results and just showing you the worst case scenario through the envelope max. So now we're going to kind of review the model and, and the results and identify which connections we want to design um, and looking at the worst case scenario for those. So I'll start with just a moment. Um, we can see where the worst moment forces are for each member. So, um, yeah, since since we pinned all these uh, beams, there's not really much of a moment force at these ends, which is kind of what we anticipated. Um, so we're going to, since we're going to design a shear connection, we'll probably look to the shear results for the governing um, design. And I'm just going to hold Control just select those so and get a clearer image of what's happening. So this is one way where we can review the results and find the worst case scenario um, to then design our beam colon connections with. So I can see we've got some 54 um, kip forces at these ends. So it looks like member 14 to 35 is probably our worst case scenario. So that's one way we can review it is through the envelope max shear force diagrams and then isolating um, those members uh, to find the worst case. Uh, another way we can, another feature we can use, which is quite helpful for this, is the uh, nodal results. So the nodal results will tell us the results at all the different nodes. So I can isolate nodes, or we can look at all of them. 
Um, we can distance as well from the node. So if I have this set to zero, it's just going to give me the result at the node. But I can also offset that, say, by uh, 1.5 feet or something like that. So I can get the results at this location and, um, yeah, automatically calculated for me. Uh, it's really helpful to, to use uh, sort of these filtering. So let's find the worst case in the FY because that's probably what's going to govern our design for these shear force connections. Um, looking at that 56, uh, sorry, 52.3 kip force. Um, another thing you can do is just download that to CSV if you want to do your own um, sort of data management or you want to review these results. Um, I often use the sort filter, which is really helpful in then filtering out the worst case <coughs> um, forces, whether it's FY, MZ, or whichever force you're using to design your connection. But uh, sort of built into the software already that you can just um, yeah, sort the, the table by uh, worst case to, to get the worst value there. Um, so yeah, it looks like looking like the 52.3 is our worst case at node 13. So we can isolate that node if we want to have a closer look. And yeah, as we saw with the other visual inspection, it's from um, column 3 to beam 14 where we're experiencing that high force um, where we can see that 52. So that's just another review that you can do. It's good to cross-reference um, or if you have a preferred workflow, that's that's uh, a way that two ways that you can interpret those results to then proceed with the connection design. So now we're going to go ahead and actually design this connection from um, the 14 to it's 35, uh, column 35. So I'm going to, go to design, start new code, connection design, and it's going to ask me to select two adjacent members. So we know now that uh, the worst case is 1435, so I'm just going to hold control and select those two members, then right click launch connection design. And my supporting member is the column which is 35, so I'll select that as my um, column. So what this is going to do is launch our connection design module where I can choose a design code, I can choose a connection type, we have um, different types as well, so moment, shear and axial, but uh, yeah, as we explained, we'll we're going to go ahead with a shear connection um, using FY as our primary design load. And we'll select the double angle. Um, it's quite a simple connection type to design, so um, yeah, keeping it simple for the, for the tutorial. So as you can see, it's imported all the column information, including the material properties, my beam information, the W10 by 12, um, with all the properties as well. So I'm really just starting with the connection type. and. I'm just going to select a material and we can do it's sort of an angle section so we're going to do maybe a 3 by 3 by half something like that and we'll do an 8 inch length so you can see that's displayed now on the graphics I can change this it's dynamic um, yeah it allows me to sort of iterate on my design really quickly and now we're going to go to our fixtures we're looking first to the angle to beam fixture so that's going to be this one here and we'll do a bolted connection. Uh, so standard holes, selecting my material properties, uh, bolt diameter, and the arrangement. Let's do a three by one. You can see a little bolt has displayed there, but obviously we need to add uh, an offset on the edge. So let's try 1.5 inches. Yeah, maybe we can do a little bit more. Um, and Yep, yeah, row spacing as well, so we want to put in some spacing between the bolts, the three bolts, so we'll do 1.5 spacing, something like that. We'll start with that, let's see how that uh, goes in the design. And then for our fix it, fixture two, so that's going to be this one here, which is the angle to column. Let's try a welded bolt, uh, sorry, welded, welded fixture. Um, selecting a material type, maybe a 0 0.25 quarter inch um, weld size. So you can see there it's displayed there in the graphics, makes it easy to visualize and understand what's happening there. And finally we'll look at the loads. Now the load was the force that was imported from our analysis model, which we inspected earlier. Um, we can obviously change that if you have your own designs, but we're going to use the, the analysis results that came through from the frame. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to run the design checks there, so I'm going to hit 
run design. And you can see I got a fair few fails there. Um, the capacity of the world is one issue that we're having, probably the highest utility problem. Oh, actually, this one here as well. So we've got some tear out um, bolt. Uh, yeah, in terms of the the beam web connection, which would be um, yeah this one here. So a really really helpful feature here is we can look at the calculation report. So not just getting you know pass fail results and some utility ratios, we can actually inspect why it is failing. So we can look at the detailed calculations. Uh, we can see sort of which parts of the model, uh, sorry, which parts of the design are failing. So we've got um, some detailing checks which are failing, looks like it's failing the minimum bolt spacing. Uh, also looking at some capacity um, results as well. So this is really helpful for identifying why it's failing um, or looking at where we can save material costs by improving the design or even just understanding what the software is doing when performing these design checks. So really helpful to have that transparency. It's really important to us as a company to, to display those. And I can review. Um, I always find searching is a really helpful feature here so I can search where my design is failing to look at all the different um, kind of areas where it is or design checks that, that it is failing and then we've got this summary at the bottom which is really helpful in just identifying um, you know just in, in, if, even if you're using this as a design just showing the final checks um, so you, you got the full check but also just the summary as well to complement the, um, the results so we can go back and sort of look at some of these um, designs. Again, search the fail, look at some of those checks. So we've got some capacity checks uh, in, the, the shear, in the shearing. So it's just kind of shearing, too much force on, on, those, um, on those bolts. So we can do things like increase the size, or the diameter of these bolts, uh, increase the material strength, or whatever controls that you have in your design to, to strengthen the design. Um, so maybe looking at sort of a larger sorry connection. So we can increase this. We had some uh, detailed problems too. So the the fixture also the spacing was too small. So we probably want to increase the space. Oops, not twelve inches. We want two inches um, to prevent that detailing issue. Maybe two inch edge. Increase the bolt size, maybe that things like that will kind of help our help our design um, pass. So there might be it just in the design too much force, but there's definitely things that we can do and iterate on, rerun our design check, um, hopefully get some better results. This came down a lot. It's pretty much at a passing stage. Uh, we've increased the spacing of our bolts to, to cater for that detail limitation. We've also increased the strength of that fixity on the um, the beam side, so we can also see that this was previously 3.5 and 2.5. So obviously, iterating on your design, um, you know, you might find you need to increase the, the the beam size to make this design work, or you can continue to sort of work with the fixities that you have or the sizing that you have to to make this design work through those um, sort of restraints or those constraints in your design. Um, from there, you can save your design. Um, you can download an STL file. So I'll show you the process of saving it. So say we do have that design finalized, we can then save this connection as one well zero two. And if I go back to my dashboard, actually, I'll just keep that page open. And we'll go to our file storage <coughs> and go to my connection design module. So you can see that's come through now. So I can relaunch that if I need to. So even though I have gone from the analysis stage and imported all my details into the connection design module, I can still launch this at a later date directly in the connection design tool uh, to finalize my design or have an engineer review it or whatever I need to do to, to finalize um, the design process. So I hope you found this uh, walkthrough helpful. Um, Feel free to send to add any comments uh, to the video, or if you have any questions, email us at support at skysiv.com. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you on the platform soon. Thanks.